Mentos and Diet Coke If you've ever wondered why Mentos and Diet Coke react so strongly to one another, well, wonder no more. To start, it should be noted that it's not just Diet Coke and Mentos that react. Other carbonated beverages will also readily respond to the addition of Mentos. What's going on here is that Mentos has thousands of small pores on its surface, disrupting the polar attractions between the water molecules, creating thousands of ideal nucleation sites for the gas molecules in the drink to congregate. In non sciencey terms, basically, the porous surface creates a lot of bubble growth sites, allowing the carbon dioxide bubbles to rapidly form on the surface of the Mentos. If you use a smooth-surfaced Mentos, you won't get nearly the reaction. The buoyancy of the bubbles and their growth in size will quickly cause the bubbles to leave the nucleation site and rise to the surface of the soda. Bubbles will continue to form on the porous surface, and the process will repeat, creating a nice, foamy result. In addition to that, the gum arabic and gelatin ingredients of the Mentos combined with the potassium benzoate sugar, or potentially aspartame, in diet sodas also help in this process. In these cases, the ingredients end up lowering the surface tension of the liquid, allowing for even more rapid bubble growth on the porous surface of the Mentos. Higher surface tension equals a more difficult environment for bubbles to form. For your reference, compounds like gum arabic that lower surface tension are called surfactants. As to why diet sodas like Diet Coke produce such a bigger reaction, it's because aspartame lowers the surface tension of the liquid much more than sugar or corn syrup will. You can also increase the effect by adding more surfactants to the soda before you add the Mentos, like adding a mixture of dishwasher soap and water. Another factor contributing to the size of the geezer is how rapidly the object causing the foaming sinks in the soda. The faster it sinks, the faster the reaction can happen, and faster reaction equals a bigger geezer. Slower reaction may release the same amount of foam overall, but also a much smaller geezer. This is another reason Mentos work so much better than other similar confectionaries. Mentos are fairly dense objects, and so tend to sink rapidly in the liquid. If you crush the Mentos so it doesn't sink at all, you won't get nearly the dramatic reaction. Yet another factor that can affect the size of the Mentos and Coke geezer is the temperature of the soda itself. The higher the temperature, the bigger the geezer, due to gases being less soluble in liquids with higher temperatures. So basically, they are more ready to escape the liquid, resulting in a faster reaction. Note that while caffeine is often cited as something that will increase the explosive reaction with the soda, this is not actually the case, at least not given the relatively small amount of caffeine found in a typical 2-liter bottle of soda generally used for these sorts of Diet Coke and Mentos reactions. If you add enough caffeine, you will see a difference, but the levels required here to see a significant difference are on the order of the amount that would kill you if you actually consumed the beverage. You'll also sometimes read that the acidity of the soda is a major factor in the resulting geezer. This is not the case either. In fact, the acidity level of the coke before and after the Mentos geezer does not change, negating the possibility of an acid-based reaction, though you can make such an acid-based reaction using baking soda. Bonus fact. While you'll sometimes hear in urban legends that people have died from drinking coke and eating Mentos, to date there has not been a single documented instance of this ever happening. This is for two reasons. First, the act of drinking soda releases quite a bit of the carbonation in it, limiting the possible effect. Second, even if one did get a strong reaction to eating and drinking Mentos and Diet Coke at the same time, you'd likely just quickly vomit up the foam, which there would have been numerous recorded instances of. On a similar note, birds will not have their stomachs blow up if you feed them rice or Alka-Seltzer. The former of these two myths largely stems from church caretakers not wanting to have to clean up dried rice after weddings, particularly lament task if it's raining, ultimately giving rise to a myth to explain why dried rice became banned, and the latter being spread about partially thanks to certain viral YouTube videos purporting to show birds blowing up after eating Alka-Seltzer. The videos, of course, were heavily doctored. So I really hope you liked that video, and if you did like it, click like below and leave us a comment to let us know what you think. And also check out a couple of our other videos, which are linked to on the screen now, and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos every day. Thanks for watching.